good evening everyone thank you all for joining the third quarter results conference call i'm sure you would have received the results by now however let me briefly take you through the numbers for the quarter ended 9 months ended 31st march 2020 i'm sorry 31st december 2020 let me begin with financials first during the quarter our revenue grew by 9% to rupees 1314 crores ebitda grew by 31% to 401 crores which is 30% 31% of sales profit before tax went up by 24% to 352 crores and profit after tax went up by 25% to 293 crores um happy to inform you that for the first time raijan our associate company after recouping all the work in progress cit cwip posted a profit for the first time and uh, our share of profit of 26 crore is included in the above numbers eps for the quarter is 14.88 per share this is for the quarter versus 12.42 in the corresponding quarter in the previous year this year quarter of course you know the capital is enhanced so this is on enhanced capital 14.88 during the 9 months uh, ytd december our total revenue grew by 21% to 4113 crores ebitda grew by 40% to 1272 crores which is 31% of the sales again and profit after tax went up by 52% to 1126 crores 1126 crores profit after tax went up by 53% to 927 crores eps for the 9 months again on the expanded capital is 48 rupees plus per share on weighted average basis versus 32 to be per share on the old capital in the corresponding 9 months in the previous year coming to the capex capex for the quarter is 197 crores cumulatively for 9 months is 509 crores and uh, similarly capex for the ongoing projects the new products projects which are still under cwip yet to go for production is about 1700 crores uh alior in our investments in alior is about 60 crore for the quarter and 9 months is 125 crores similarly funding to alior is 800 crores uh as we have reported last quarter net borrowing is pretty low now at around 300 crore gross borrowing borrowing is 600 crore net debt equity is marginal at 0.08 i will now hand over the discussion to pranav for his presentation on international business uh thank you mr bhairi uh, we had another uh, decent quarter in the international business largely driven by the api and row markets Uh, the R&D expense was 148 crores, approximately 11 percentage of 11 percent of sales. We filed one ANDA during the quarter. We also received eight approvals in the quarter, including two tentative. We cumulatively have 137 ANDA approvals, which includes 18 tentative approvals. Uh, during the quarter, we launched seven products, including a Senafine and Demolol, which were interesting opportunities. We plan to launch around five to six products in the fourth quarter as well. uh the international formulations business grew by 3% to 683 crores for the quarter and 27% to 2233 crores for 9 months us generics de grew by 1% to 512 crores for the quarter and grew 21% to rupees 1689 crores for the 9 months ex us generics continue to grow uh, by 14% to 171 crores for the quarter and by almost 50% to 544 crores for the 9 months epi business also grew by 21% to 214 crores a quarter and by 34% to 741 crores for the 9 months and now i invite shona to share some insights on the india branded business yeah uh, good afternoon everyone so the india branded business you know on the back of some recovery in the market along with a better operational performance we did manage to show a 14% growth for the quarter 
and a 5% growth combination for nine months of the financial year. Largely, the growth in this quarter was driven by our focused specialty segments, which is 15% growth in cardiology, 19% growth in gynecology, 19% growth in gastro, and 30% growth in diabetology, which is a continuation of the performance that we saw in Q2 also. In antibiotics, on a flat market, we did manage to clock in a positive 3% growth on the antibiotic side, and on the cough and cold side, the market still continues to underperform, and we continue to underperform along with the market in uh, Q3. You know, in terms of new launches, we had two important launches in Q3, which was dapagliflozin as well as uh, rivaloxaban in the cardiology space, cardiodiabetes space, which uh, we feel going forward will give us a strong traction in sales in the coming years. Um, within the portfolio, like I emphasized last quarter, the key focus brands which were the ones which largely drew, were able, to, were the ones that were able to drive this growth. And um, you know, going forward, we expect this momentum to continue. Um, on the acute side of things, especially cough and cold, you know, we're eagerly awaiting some normalization of the market, which we expect with the vaccine rollout to happen in Q4. Um, on the back of that, we're extremely confident that the kind of performance we've been able to pick up in the specialty side of things, we'll be able to demonstrate those in cough and cold as well as as well as uh, our antibiotics portfolio once market reaches to more normalization level normal levels in terms of overall growth numbers month on month. So that's all. I'd like to open the floor for Q and A, please. Thank you very much, sir. Ladies and gentlemen, we will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may please press star, then one on the touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star, then two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Anyone who wishes to ask questions, please press star, then one. The first question is from the line of Damianti Kerai from HSBC. Please go ahead. Hi. Uh, thank you for the opportunity. So uh, my question is on India business part. I uh, just wanted to understand that uh, better. So in most of the focus therapies, uh, you have achieved uh, good growth. So can you a bit uh, more uh, discuss there, like uh, what is helping us? New launch is, of course, one uh, big driver. But what other factors are leading to this kind of uh, very strong growth for India market? Uh, that's my first question. Yeah, so on the India market, the growth is more largely at the moment driven majority by the old products in our portfolio. The new launches are too new, and as you know, in India, it takes couple of years in the cardio diabetes or in the specialty space for the brands to really pick up large momentum. So yes, the new brands have contributed in a small way, but largely it's the old brands. What has helped in driving this growth is I think the last two years of reorganizing a lot of uh, trade practices along with a lot of um, refocus and reorganizing our portfolio. I think, uh, like I've been saying since Q4 last financial year, that, you know, our business has stabilized. Unfortunately, I think it was the pandemic, pandemic which kind of, you know, didn't allow us to show it. And now, as things are returning to normal, you know, we're starting to see the benefits of all the restructuring exercises we've done in the India portfolio, especially on the specialty side. Okay, so uh, still uh, the growth is uh, largely driven by a pickup in the older brand, as you mentioned, and. The uh, contribution from uh, new launches will take some time to reflect in the numbers, right? To contribute large num large to contribute in a large way to the growth, yes, it will take few quarters. Still. Okay, and uh, last quarter we had uh, some benefits for uh, azithromycin uh, demand pickup. So, uh, I assume uh, that is still continuing for this quarter, right? No, so this quarter the uh, azithromycin benefit has tapered down and. Um, if I could give you an overall number versus a degrowth of the overall antibiotic market, we could show a plus 3% growth on our antibiotic portfolio. Obviously, a large part of that was contributed to azithromycin growth, but we definitely see a more easing up of growth on the azithromycin side at the back end of Q3, which we're seeing continuing into Q4. 
ओके एंड माय सेकंड क्वेश्चन इज ऑन द कॉस्ट पार्ट सो ऑन इंडिया बिजनेस हाउ मच ऑफ कॉस्ट इज बैक टू प्री पैंडेमिक लेवल बिकॉज अदर ऑपरेटिंग कॉस्ट आई थिंक डिस्पाइट पिकअप इन ऑपरेशन वी सो सिक्वेंसल डिक्लाइन राइट so um, as far as uh, cost is concerned both the uh, field activities now are almost at the uh, pre covid level uh, same uh, the customer meeting and uh, meeting in the field is uh, full swing uh, promo cost is back to normal so we are back to normal almost so this uh, second difference between third quarter and second quarter uh, uh, we should understand that large difference is coming due to lumpiness in the iind expense so uh, that's a consolidated number which is uh, uh, which factors a lot like in q2 we had a larger rnd expense uh, which is a uh, little uh, lower this time but rnd is uh, dependent on a uh, lot of moving factors but uh, india business uh, expenses are more or less in uh, now like Uh, sure thank you uh, i have more question i'll get back in the queue thank you the next question is from the line of tushar from motilal oswal please go ahead am i audible uh, yes sir yes just on the us business side um, excuse me this is the operator i'm sorry to interrupt mr uh, tushar your voice is uh, feeble we can't hear you Is it better now? To use your handset, please. Is it is it better now? Uh, yes, we can hear you now. Yeah, just on the US side, I would like to understand. Given that there would be some delay in the inspection of the new facilities, so uh, uh, considering your earlier guidance of 450 crore expenses coming in FI 22, will that get pushed? Uh, that is my first question. Yeah. So um, as far as the expenses are concerned. uh the one that we the facility that we've done maximum filings from f3 that i think we've done about 5 to 7 filings already there's some products which are in shortage we've been discussing with the fda i'm hopeful that uh, they will be here within the next uh, quarter or two uh but listen let's see how it goes no one knows what's happening in this world but i'm hopeful that within the next next 6 months they should be here for an inspection so the expenses will start hitting once we commercialize sales from that plant and on the filing side uh, given that these new facilities the filing pace was supposed to pick up so uh, when, when do we see that happening so we've already started uh, see okay f4 is an extension of uh, not extension but it's a old solid so we're not doing any new filings per se from f from f4 that will be the existing facility we will move some uh, site transfer products over there for additional capacity in terms of f2 which is our oncology block we have already done some filings the injectables we will do excuse me, excuse me the injectables we will do by the end of this year and the injectable block the general injectable we already done 5 to 7 filings and uh, that's when uh, the fda has given us a date as well which is of course got pushed back because of covid got it thanks that's it from my side thank you thank you the next question is from the line of charulata gaidani from the lalan brocha please go ahead charulata gaidani from the lalan brocha your line is unmuted please go ahead with the question yeah uh congrats on the good set of numbers my query is uh, if you could post some more insight into the india business because india business growth has come across as healthy as well as acute to prevent acute has been doing well across uh, across the industry there is a 9% growth in acute and also in the animal health category so can we consider this as a new quarterly base and how do you see this going forward Could you just repeat your question? The voices were clear. You just have you heard? Yeah. So no, you are right. Uh, Charulaba India business has done well, and I think for last few quarters we have been explaining our strategy to revamp the India business, make it more sustainable, make it more profitable, and some of these efforts seems to be paying off. Uh, going forward, yeah, we are we remain quite confident of uh, doing uh, better than the market in most segments of our uh, our focus. 
that uh, the reason the reason of this growth is it is it that you have widened the reach or uh, or have have you taken an increase in prices? No, it's both. Actually, it's a recovery in the market and our operational efficiencies both have both have combined to uh, take us to this growth number. Uh, price increases and all those are I mean part of life for any pharma company. We you know there are a lot of restrictions on price increases. We do wherever uh, there is a uh, it is allowed by the the law and uh, the competition. But that's not an important factor. Import, important factor is the um, operational efficiencies and some recovery, of course, in the overall market. Right. Uh, and my second question pertains to the U.S. U.S. has come down to around $70 million in the quarter. So do you see this uh, going down further or do you think this is the bottom? So, um, so the U.S. business, as you know, our last quarter, last eight quarters or so have been quite exceptional in the U.S. business. This was largely, as the market knows, due to various reasons such as sartans and shortages. So Excuse me, this is the operator. Participants, the line for the management has dropped. We request you all to please stay connected while we reconnect the management. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for patiently waiting. The line is reconnected, so you may go ahead. Yeah, thank you. So, yes, uh, the U.S. business, as I was saying, the last eight quarters for the U.S. business have been quite exceptional. As everyone knows, uh, there were a lot of shortages in the market and a lot of disruptions, which caused this fantastic growth for us. So, quarter on quarter, it's tough to say. Uh, there's been some correction, as I mentioned in the last couple of calls, that the markets are stabilizing with the Sartans. Moving forward, um, I don't want to say uh, quarter on quarter, but uh, we still stick to our guidance for two, three years. We expect to be in by FY24 closer to the 400 odd million in terms of U.S. sales. Okay. Yeah. Thanks. All the best. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Vishal Baraya from Aviva Insurance. Please go ahead. Uh, hi, uh, uh, Pranav, what would have caused a lower growth for the quarter in the U.S.? Uh, would it be pricing pressure on Sartans or loss of market share or something that you can share? Yeah, so uh, Sartans is a big part of it. So, yes, there was uh, there is incremental competition in Sartans. That is one of the reasons. And uh, we lost some accounts. We didn't want to bid at the prices that were there. So we let go of some accounts from the Sartans. That is predominantly the reason. Um, as you know, the last, as I mentioned, last eight quarters, there have been a lot of disruptions in the market. And uh, there were a lot of opportunities, very high-priced opportunities, which are no law, I mean, which are very uh, less now. Um, but listen, it's U.S. market. Uh, it, you keep finding opportunities, so let's see how it goes. Okay. So uh, incrementally, as we see ahead uh, in 4Q, so should it be similar to what we see with what we saw in 4Q, or should we see incremental deterioration? Any perspectives for the coming two, three quarters? It's uh, very tough to give a guidance, uh, but you know, as I said, there's a lot of disruptions. If some disruptions happen, then it could be better. We've just recently launched some new products in December, so it's really a matter of uh, what uh, uh, we get. I think I expect it to be around similar. You know what I said, around about 70 odd million that I've been guiding for. Okay. Uh, you, were, you were planning to launch some limited competition products uh, in the so U.S. Launched, in yes, uh, we launched uh, two in December, actually three in December. Uh, one was mm -hmm. a Senapin, which was a day one launch. There were three other people in the market. Uh, the other one was a Timolol, where, where the sole uh, uh, exclusivity that we've got on that. Uh, so both interesting opportunities. Apart from that, we also launched uh, Tavaborol, which is a Derm product, which is an interesting product, as well as uh, Latisse, the Bimatiprost. Okay. Okay. So overall, if you see the pricing pressure in U.S., like for the last uh, first half of this financial year, we saw that uh, the pricing pressure had reduced to low single digit. So does that scenario continue or overall for the U.S. business? So um, as I mentioned in the last call, we're seeing a lot more people enter the market again. Uh, so there's two aspects of it. One is the disruptions that you see due to shortages. That has become less. So this does not give you scope for uh, a higher price one time by uh, what we saw for the last eight quarters. 
Uh, whereas the, on the startups, is, it's relatively stable. Uh, so I'm not as worried about going forward. It's relatively more stable. So it'll be easier to predict in the next couple of quarters how it's going to move. Okay. Okay, so business, if I got you right, the overall scenario seems to be still be safe, stable. Would we have yeah, the overall scenario, um, our long term, uh, what we expect for the next two years or so, I'm pretty confident. I'm still very bullish on the U.S. market. Uh, our facilities are ready. We're waiting uh, inspections, especially F3, the injectable one, where we already filed about five, seven products. So I'm still quite bullish on the U.S. market. Uh, right. And uh, just coming to the non-US market, the growth this quarter would have been driven still by Europe uh, because of the serialization issues getting resolved or would have been largely it's the new entries like yeah, South Africa uh, ramping up in Brazil? So it's across the territories. The three main territories that we are part of is Europe, Canada, Australia. And I think all three territories we saw uh, could uh, focus on the supplies and there was growth across the territories. Okay. 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 So, uh, and just one last question on the API side. Uh, the profitability on API, uh, on the API business continues to be as good as it was in one edge? Yeah, so uh, the first half we saw a lot more opportunities in API. The profitability still remains to uh, stay good, you know, for us. Uh, as I've mentioned many times that we have always been uh, more of a premium kind of a player in uh, APIs and we like on the, we only focus on the regulated markets per se. So pricing has been fine. Um, having said that, after the first half of the year where there were a lot of disruptions from China, that has become less, and I think Chinese supplies are back in the market. Okay. 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 And, and the pricing also for API, the pricing would have also reduced a bit because now the Chinese supplies are back? Um, not for us. We're not seeing that. Okay. Okay. So profitability for you would continue to be still be incredibly better? Yeah, so far, yes. Oh, sorry, I'll come back with you for more questions. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Rasmi Sanjeti from Incred Research. Please go ahead. Yeah, thanks for the opportunity. Uh, most of the questions have been answered. Just two things. Uh, on debt, uh, current uh, gross borrowing stands at 600 crores. Uh, so what is the outlook on that? Uh, uh, will there be a major repayment uh, in FI22 also? Or will it, will it remain at the same level? So uh, the debt consists of largely the NCD, which will fall due in uh, uh, next year, 22-23, and will be paid in 22-23. Sir, how much uh, would it come down? So in next year, it doesn't come down. I mean, it will come down by 100 crores. Okay, in FY22. And sir, in FY23? Yeah, it, it it gets repaid, yeah, fully. Completely. Okay. And uh, sir, on R&D part, in the earlier part of the year, you said that, you know, R&D would be roughly around uh, 700 crores. And I think in the uh, nine months, we have done around uh, four, uh, 475 crores. So uh, is it something that, you know, we stick to our guidance or uh, we believe that, you know, it would be lower than uh, 700 crores? So, um, you know, uh, you're right, I think at the start of the year we had said 700, but as you know, first quarter was a little bit of a washout or a little lower R&D activity due to the uh, lockdowns and stuff like that. So I think uh, we will end up at about 630 to 650 crores or so for the year. Okay, sir. And so lastly on India business, uh, if you could help us understand that, you know, whether there were any new launches, I mean, how many launches have we done in nine months in both speciality and the acute segment? In the last five months, we have launched um, one product in the acute side, and uh, we've launched uh, one, two new products in the speciality side. Uh, we launched Bilastine, which is an anti-histamine product in the acute side of business, and we've launched um, Dapaglipocin in the cardio diabetes space, along with uh, Rivaloxaban, also in the cardio diabetes space. Okay, sir. All right. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Anmol Ganju from JM Financial. Please go ahead. Yeah. Hi. Uh, thank you. Thanks for taking my question. Uh, a couple of questions. Uh, one is that uh, for the new launches that we had this quarter in the U.S., a couple of interesting opportunities that you referred to. Uh, for for what period during the quarter did we get the full benefit of those launches? Uh, were they? Uh, uh, 
Did you are speaking about the Indian launch yes, yes, yes. 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 uh, no, It launched in uh, December itself and uh, I think in the latter half of December. So I think you only saw about uh, two, three weeks of sales at the most. Okay. In that case, you know, given that we've had fairly strong growth even in India, which is a higher uh, uh, gross margin contributor, uh, the sequential decline in margins, uh, although still healthy, points to a fairly uh, grim pricing uh, action uh, sequentially. So is it fair to say that this quarter, therefore, now represents the normalized level of certain contribution? and uh, increment the deterioration uh, for this piece, which we've been worried about for the last couple of quarters, is hard to conceive. Okay. So, I mean, I really do not understand because our margins have been uh, pretty good and uh, have been consistent, consistent of, uh, I mean, uh, a few basis points here or there doesn't really matter, but uh, the GC continues to be at around 75%. The EBITDA continues to be at around 30 percent, which is which is what we had. Uh, I, I, I I I understand that, uh, Mr. Baiti, and full full compliments to you for achieving that. What I'm trying to understand is that uh, this quarter, therefore, you know, given the deterioration we have seen in the certain contribution, is it the new base going forward? Uh, therefore, because I think purely sequentially, the pricing action on the certain side and US seems to be uh, not in line with the last eight nine quarters. Uh, something which we have been worried about given the sustainability. So that's what my question is. Yeah, so um, so hopefully, I mean, um, in the foreseeable future, we should be able to retain our margins. Okay, okay. And uh, the, the certain contribution, therefore, this quarter is most likely the bottom, right? Yeah, most likely is what? Sorry, I didn't hear that. Uh, the, the, bottom, the bottom, the trough. Yeah, I mean, I don't know if the trough or how much lower it can go, but uh, I think, yeah, it is what it is, you know, so moving forward, the contribution from Sartans is lower than what it was in the first half of the year. So basically, uh, Prana, what I'm trying to understand is the vulnerability of the U.S. sales territory to any adverse uh, competitive environment of the like that you refer to in your comments. Uh, to uh, to the Sartan picture. So I think yeah. you have reasonable confidence that that is not the case, right? Yeah. So yeah. So as I mentioned earlier, somebody else asked. You know, if you ask me about my uh, moving forward, going uh, to FY23 or FY24, I think our internal estimates stay intact. Uh, we're still confident about the U.S. market. As regards the Sartans, you know, also mentioned that the last eight quarters there've been a lot of disruptions in the market. Uh, so it's stabilized quite a bit. So it's a little more easier to predict now because there were a lot of disruptions in the past, a lot of one-time buy opportunities across the board. So that's what caused uh, in the past. But I think moving forward, I think it's settled for now, in my opinion. Thank you so much, Pranav, and congratulations for yet again good quarter. Thanks, thanks. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Ranbir Singh from Sunidhi Securities. Please go ahead. Yeah, thanks for taking my question. So, uh, one question uh, related to Elior JB. So, uh, if you could just uh, give a detail of what is status currently we have there. So, of the uh, current approvals in this quarter, like six final approvals, how? Uh, much was from Elior, and uh, are we making a break even at bottom line at this level? So, um, I mean, uh, for Elior, uh, you know, uh, we started the commercial, uh, uh, you know, sales uh, last year itself. We are aware about it. I mean, uh, the sales in the overall context is uh, very minuscule. Uh, we had couple of approvals in the current, uh, you know, basket of approvals for the quarter from earlier basket as well actually. Um, going ahead, I mean, you know, when we have the critical basket, you know, uh, we have 30, 40 products approved and, you know, when we start selling that in the market, we will kind of, you know, see how the Dharma portfolio performs in the overall scheme of things. Right now it is, you know, uh, I mean, uh, it's, it's a limited uh, number at this point in time. So are we uh, making a losses there and what would be the quantum of uh, loss currently we are making on a quarterly basis? So, yeah, so there is a loss at this moment, but uh, because uh, in a line-by-line -line consolidation, it gets consolidated, you can get a feel of the losses based on the minority interest which is getting disclosed in the annual report, I mean, the, in the financial agents. Okay, okay, fine. Okay, and secondly, uh, you see in presentation, we have one injectable app, uh, approved. So, uh, is this a tentative approval or final approval? Um, I, I don't think we have an injectable approved as yet. 
if it is then it's a tentative it won't be a commercialized okay and uh, so uh, this is from uh, f3 f3 facility right uh, this is from a cmo it is uh, this Yeah. Oh, this is Yeah, this is a CMO. We have launched that. Yeah, sorry. Yeah. Okay, fine. Yeah, that's all from my side. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Abhishek Sharma from Jeffrey. Please go ahead. Thank you for taking my question. Uh, sir, I had a question on Amdal Isib. Uh, given that we are heading into clinical date for uh, monotherapy for two indications to good data this year, What kind of milestone uh, and royalty can we expect for Ryzen uh, and thereby for uh, uh, for LFB in F522? So I wish I had the answer. I mean, this is a difficult question. You know, uh, the product is will be is already out licensed to TGDX, so they will be doing the marketing. I am entitled to receive a high single digit uh, royalty on sales. So depends depending on the approval time and. how they launch and what kind of market share they capture uh, the royalty will be dependent on that difficult for me to predict but we are we are pretty hopeful of a good number and the milestone so milestone also i think once the product is launched we would be eligible for some more milestones and nothing on approval uh now approval and launch will be almost simultaneous so yes on launch now no, nothing on approval Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Gagan Thareja from Kotak. Please go ahead. Yeah. Uh, hello. Am I audible? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, good evening. Uh, thanks for uh, letting me uh, ask the questions. My first question is uh, around your uh, India uh, piece. if you could give to start with give uh, you know a ballpark idea of the contribution of sales from anti infective gastro and cough and cold for uh, for anemic so our uh, numbers are given the table in the investor presentation which is uh, which is part of our yeah, graphic if you look at it actually the special one is 46 okay Thanks. and uh, uh you know a you launched apparently frozen and liver oxalban these are products quite a few others would have launched as well uh, these having gone off patent uh, and and you know uh, you are uh, trying to push through into into the chronic therapies uh, and building up there but but that's that's uh, that's a strategy that i think uh, a lot of your peers would also be following uh, given you know that situation uh how do you differentiate and and you know manage to maintain the growth that we seen uh, in in this quarter for for the india piece yeah so you know first and foremost i don't think this is a one off growth quarter because if you see even in q2 we had a 16% growth in the uh, cardio business cash flow grew by 16% in q2 and again if you could continue and we see this trend based on uh, numbers in the market um you know in regards to differentiation i think the question is far more complicated i think is not i think we could have a separate call if required to discuss it in detail but i think we have start i think i think there are too many things we can talk about differentiation in terms of competitive peers um, in terms of the new launches i think you know we are extremely confident that we will be able to take good market share in all the new cardio diabetes launches Partly, this is based on the fact that we've seen lot strong traction from our customers. We believe in our price, in our strategy, and we feel we done good justice to the launch to drive it. So, um, so far, what we're seeing is, I think we're set up well to, you know, take good advantage of this, uh, of all the new launches, despite the competition in this game. The second question is around the in the QIP. uh you been indicating that you know uh, you you gone through a period of very heavy uh, capacity building which will now trail out uh and therefore i i would presume that you know you would be positioned for a very good healthy free cash flow generation uh which could you know which could have been used for the debt repayment uh and therefore i was wondering you know uh 
what was the thought process uh, for, for the QIP, given that you would get into a strong FCF generation mode already? Sure. So I, I think a lot of discussions had happened in October because the QIP was in August and uh, in October uh, results call there was uh, quite a uh, quite a this issue was discussed in quite a uh, detail. Uh, just to briefly uh, reiterate, we believe we still have a lot of uh, growth opportunities, uh, particularly in the international markets, and we'll continue to invest. So we, we have just taken a small pause. We wanted these facilities to be inspected, approved, new products rolled out, and we, we already have on our drawing board further expansion plans. So uh, we believe that uh, QIP will de-risk the entire uh, uh, balance sheet, and that will. So there is an element of business risk, and we didn't want to couple it with the financial risk, and that's always a prudent strategy. Arabic has always been a conservative organization. We have been, we have been very, very major on uh, equity dilution, and we very consciously did it. Uh, that uh, actually demonstrates our, uh, our uh, confidence in the, uh, in the international business. Okay. Uh, third, third question is around the, the U.S. sales. Uh, uh, if, if I have, if I got it correct, you've been pointing out that on an average, 20 to 25 approvals. Is, is a possible, you know, base case scenario for you in US in in, in the coming years, uh, which would mean that your entire pending uh, pipeline could get monetized in three to four years, uh, and and the size of that pipeline at 118 pending, I presume, uh, would be uh, higher than uh, the number of products you have in the market. Also, uh, they would be better pilings in terms of, uh, you know, the quality, uh, which which would mean that ideally you should you should be in a position to be 80% to a double of, of your current base by the time you monetize all of this. Uh, you've also indicated last quarter that, you know, in, in by FY24, you could be 400 to 500, but now I think you're talking of around 400. Any any reason for, uh, or, or, you know, uh, that? No, I've always said it's very tough to say on the generic side. So uh, when I say guidance, I say it's not a guidance per se. I said that, Companies uh, at the similar phase that we were in with kind of filings and what they've done, uh, what would be internal target? Yeah, internal target would still be 400 to 500 million, anywhere between that. So that doesn't change. Okay. Well, lastly, sir, between NEIS and uh, the new costs that you'll incur uh, with the new plants coming in next year, uh, what could be the you know uh, sustainable sort of a EBITDA margin profile for you? So. They will go hand in hand. Uh, so once we have the, and there can be a bit of time lag, but otherwise they'll go hand in hand. So once I have the new plants inspected, approved, the commercial production rolled out of that, yes, the overheads will start hitting the PNL, but so will be the revenue generated out of those plants. Now, uh, I have always said that 30 percent of the Larger sales volume is your ambitious uh, EBITDA margin. It may come down a bit, but I think in absolute terms, uh, the business will be significantly bigger at that time. Okay. Thanks. Thanks for answering my questions. That's all from my side. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Anubhav Agarwal from Credit Suisse. Please go ahead. Yeah, thank you. Uh, Mr. Bhaiti, one question on the Indian market. You mentioned that uh, field force activity is uh, fully back uh, at pre covid level. Just one question on the promotion spend as well. My understanding was that until the last quarter, I'm not very updated what's happened this quarter. On the conference side, at least for the doctors, everything was digital so far. So what, what's the update there? Is that uh, still digital uh, and that part is not in that? So we had, uh, I mean, Shonak has been saying consistently we had moved away from those uh, uh, CRM and those conference sponsoring activity a long time back. Uh, most of our promo activities are now science centric or in clinic uh, support centric so and we had already taken a beating some time back due to that but we thought that uh, being compliant in letter and spirit is always going to be uh, sustainable so uh, i mean that has not really impacted our pnl if you ask me so would you say that your uh, indian level margins are now very similar to what you were doing at pre covid they are not at elevated levels as uh, were for the Years that in the first six months of this year. Also, oh, now they are at pre-COVID levels. Okay, sure. Thank you, Vanessa. Thanks. Thank you.
the next question is from the line of Nitin Agarwal from Dam Capital. Please go ahead. Hi, sir. Yeah. <clears throat> so, on um, so, you, uh, is there any more, uh, so when we're looking at the CAPEX plan for the next couple of years, how should we look at, uh, should, should, should we think about our CAPEX now? So, I think uh, uh, during our uh, QIP or post QIP interaction, I had already said that uh, there are plans to add a couple of more injectable lines on uh, F3 uh, once we have uh, uh, once we have this inspection and uh, uh, approvals uh, in place. So we have created an infrastructure which is a little larger than what we have populated currently. We have populated three lines, and it can take three, two to three more lines. We have already uh, initiated the what do I say the concept paper for installing two more lines going ahead. Sir, uh, so what kind of uh, that, uh, sorry? In addition to that, we are we said we are already making more investments in API. Now that the government has come out with uh, a little liberal guidelines for uh, granting environment and other approvals, and API had uh, been under invested, if I can say so, in last couple of years, we are stepping up our investments on API. So these two uh, areas will take some investments going forward. So, is there any uh, amounts which are uh, sort of earmarked towards these two towards API and injectable uh, KPIs going forward? In the, you know? So, I, I think going, I mean, going forward, uh, excluding the normal maintenance capex, uh, we should be spending about 400 uh, to 500 crores in next year and a half, two years. So that's 400 crores each, right? No, to, uh, both together. Across the injectable and the API business. Uh, these two, I mean, new initiative. And then, you know, there are uh, about uh, 250, 300 crores of annual maintenance capex. That, that would continue. That includes R&D also. So, the broadly speaking, about 1,000 crores of, uh, of capex over the next two years, right, including yeah. maintenance and growth. Yeah, you are right. Okay. And, sir, uh, on, the, on the other emerging, uh, other regular, uh, emerging market businesses, and that, that sort of scaled up very nicely in this nine months. Uh, is, uh, Shana, in, the, in this, what is this business of... Uh, so how should we look at this business now incrementally going forward? Because this is now a reasonably sized business for us and about almost like 800 crores per annum, almost $100 million business, which is amongst the larger emerging market businesses uh, amongst the peer group also. So we are, not, uh, we, are, Nitin, we are not in emerging markets. Uh, these, uh, what we call ROW markets are all regulated markets. The largest part of it is Europe and followed by Canada, Australia and so on. Oh, okay. And this is largely so, a reflection yeah, of a US I mean, how we look at it is India market, US and X, US, ROW, but all of them are regulated markets. Oh, okay. So it's a likes of Canada and EU largely, you know, those kind of markets. Yeah. Oops. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you. The next question is on the line of Ayush Mittal from Mittal Analytics. Please go ahead. Uh, good afternoon, sir. Uh, so, in reference to your uh, earlier update about the U.S. Uh, pending U.S. FDA inspection for a new plant, I wanted to understand more about it. Like, uh, if the inspection is to happen in a quarter or two, by when do you expect to get onto commercialization and perhaps attain uh, optimum utilization? So, uh, what will happen is uh, because there are some products which are in shortage and which are waiting. There's no patent uh, expiry on that, so those will start get launched right away. So right after the inspection, I expect that uh, as you get the go ahead, they will give the A&D approval as well. Um, in terms of capacity utilization, full level, that will take a while because there's three lines and then we're going to add more lines as well. So that will take a while, but the plant will start contributing once we start commercializing these products. Yeah, by, by optimum utilization, what I mean is that uh, broadly good enough to cover the additional cost and of depreciation, manpower, and so, other, so many other things that have been pending to be expensed. Right. Uh, right, right, right up to predict that and say right now, and I can't really give a guidance on that. Um, so I'm sorry. And also, given, given COVID, uh, is there, uh, uh, you see that there is reasonable to expect this inspection to happen in a quarter or two, or there can be more delays? Are you seeing the USDA inspect plants in these times? So, the, uh, so far, they're not inspecting. Uh, but we've been talking to them, and that's why I'm kind of hopeful that within the next uh, two quarters, they may come and inspect, you know, because uh, there's some products which are in shortage. But so far, US, the FDA hasn't been coming and inspecting. Okay. And, and you plan to keep doing more filings till then? Um, absolutely. Absolutely, yes. 
Okay. Uh, so there's always one accounting issue that uh, comes in respect to this expansion that given that this uh, uh, approval has been so delayed, while our people are operating there, so shouldn't the company take a more prudent approach and charge off the operational expenses going forward? Even before we get the full go ahead from USFDA. Uh, there, are, there are two aspects, one is in a, uh, and both are related to accounting standard. So an accounting standard says that unless, uh, I mean, you need to capitalize expenses till the commercial use is started. But uh, you are aware that there is a, another standard which also requires company to test for impairment. And uh, yeah. we and the auditors keep uh, testing for impairment. And we still believe that the expenses which are loaded to the capitalization would still uh, meet its uh, financial uh, goal. So we don't need any impairment. So I think, uh, I mean, so far we are good. No, because in the unless committee, there's a lot of concern because of this part that as the plant has been put up, people are there. So there's definitely a uh, lot of expenses and uh, 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 depreciation to things, machinery and everything happening just because it is out there and uh, and uh, you're doing filings and all those things. So isn't it prudent uh, to have some charge to the PNL? So Ayush, uh, what we are doing is, you know, we're not uh, capitalizing every expense, okay? So all the uh, trials that we do, machine trials we do, I mean, you know, strictly which can be capitalized are the ones which are getting capitalized. The batches that we take, I mean, you know, scalar patches, the exhibit patches, mm -hmm. all, of, all of those things we do are all getting expenses R&D expenditure. Okay. Now come to the administration portion of the entire plan, mm -hmm. actually. That is also getting expensed out. So the one which okay. just gets capitalized is the core thing which, you know, is useful for building the capacity, I mean, you know, building the manufacturing facility. That is only getting capitalized, okay? Uh, that's really good to know, Mithanshu, because uh, if you go to several forums, I think there's a lot of debate on these issues. And if there's more clarity, if you can quantify on some numbers or something that we are expensing so much uh, of expense, which is towards new initiatives, that will help analysts understand the company better. Um, just a feedback can, from my side. Uh, you know, not getting into the numbers, conceptually, we could talk about it and we can take this offline. I'll give you, uh, you know, sure. greater flavor on this. Okay. Uh, the second question I have is, uh, uh, Professor, you had mentioned, uh, which uh, uh, other analysts had also asked earlier, that uh, our ambition from the U.S. business is to scale up to uh, uh, 400, 500 million dollar. And now, as we are already at 70 million dollar uh, stable revenue, which is almost 280, uh, 300 million dollar number, given that we are doing such a large capex towards the U.S., shouldn't our, uh, our revenue three, four years down the line much higher? The aim should be much higher. If not, why? Well, it's a, it's a continuous process, so when... Uh, because you're building these facilities for a long period of time, right? Uh, mm -hmm. So I'll explain. So the injectable facility that we built, uh, that's got ophthalmic, it's got uh, uh, pre-filled syringes and vials. And we will keep uh, building that as we go along. We'll keep adding more products to it. So the revenue will continue growing. I'm saying in uh, by FY24, we'll get to four, five hundred million. It won't stop that. It'll continue growing after that as well. And also there's a timeline, right? Because we're filing, uh, let's say, about 10 to 12 handouts that we expect to file from this new facility F3. Uh, from mm -hmm. oncology, these are a little more back-ended in terms of approvals because they're all under patents. But most of them are all P4s from the oncology facility. So that's what the combination. And it's just a start. And then we'll, of course, keep ramping up from there, then onwards as well. Yeah, so that's what I was trying to get that as we are moving up the value chain where we are trying to do more complex things and uh, injectables, onco, gamma. So logically, the pathway should be much higher. The aim should be much higher as we go forward. And uh, uh, we can do more of brownfield capex also if we get success. Yeah, I mean, the business has to keep growing you know, at some point. You have to keep adding new yeah. products and more complex ones. OK. OK. Um, uh, so one more question. With the R&D spend that we do today is quite high when we compare to any of our peers. Going forward, do you uh, think this will continue to grow as a percentage or will this taper down? as a revenue scale up from new expansion that we are going to take? Uh, we've got asked this question in the past as well. I think what will happen is, as an absolute amount, it will continue growing. But as a percentage, once these new facilities are commercialized, you'll start seeing it come down. Okay. And will that come down to 7-8%? Is that a reasonable assumption? I would say about uh, 9 to 10% at least. Okay. Okay. Thank you. All the best. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Nimesh Mehta from Research Delta Advisors. Please go ahead. 
Yeah, thanks for the question. Um, no question. I just wanted to know, you mentioned that uh, we have launched SNAPIC. Can you let us know, you know what is the likely competition? Uh, because I guess this is a product which is settled. So is there a yeah. difference in launches between other players? So I think uh, in the market from last, uh, I remember there's about uh, three other people apart from us. There's uh, authorized generic as well as uh, two additional uh, competitors in the market. It's a decent uh, product uh, uh, which has got uh, pushed back because of the patent, but we've launched, we've picked up some market share. We'll get more clarity in the next uh, uh, couple of months, you know, how, how the market settles down. Okay, and we've launched, uh, what I understand is we've launched two uh, dosage phones uh, versus three. So, I mean, is that, does that two capture the majority of the market or how is it? So there's uh, two strengths uh, of the uh, formulation. Yes, that's majority of the market. Next majority of the market. Okay. And any color on the other opportunity that you mentioned, Timolo, the gel, so which are also, also interesting opportunity. Uh, there's uh, the innovator in the market uh, as well as us, and uh, I think Sandoz has a different form, but uh, we have the sole exclusivity on it. And also, I believe there are supply shortages in the market, so it's looking interesting right now. Let's see next couple of months how it develops. So are we the only player right now because of shortages? So I think, uh, I'm not sure. I think the Innovator and Sandoz are supplying some quantities as well. Maybe not full quantities, but they're there in the market. Oh, I see. Practically, we are the only player. Okay. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Prakash from Access. Please go ahead. Yeah, good evening. Uh, thanks for the opportunity. So my question uh, is on R&D. I'm, I'm sorry I joined a little late, but uh, what is the R&D spend we're planning to do uh, for fiscal 22 and 23? Uh, any rough ballpark percentage of sales uh, would help? So uh, in terms of absolute amount, uh, somebody asked earlier, but I'll just repeat it since you were there. Uh, we'll end up the year uh, below 650 crores for R&D because the first quarter was a little slower due to COVID. As regards next year, I expect R&D to be anywhere between 700 to 750 crores. Okay, and the momentum can continue given you have, uh, you know, 200 plus products in the grid and uh, you want to file 2025. Uh, do you anticipate a year after it would uh, taper a bit or it would be at this level? I think uh, it will be at this, this level itself. Absolute amount will gradually keep increasing. Uh, because we will also start doing a little more specialty and uh, more complex products. But as a percentage, once the new facilities are commercialized, you see revenue from them, uh, then come down. Perfect, great, thanks. And second one is on the, you know, the EBITDA margin. So as Mr. Baiti said that, uh, you know, the, uh, the expense side of promotions and all are back to normal pre-COVID levels. And you also mentioned that Sartan has seen some competition. Uh, despite that, we were able to do 27% uh, kind of 27-28% uh, kind of core margins x other income. So, just wanted to understand uh, how sustainable are these given the you know uh, both these uh, you know tailwinds or in spite of that factoring in, you are able to do 27-28%. Are these sustainable for next year as well? So, we have not given the next year uh, margin guidance. We have given an overall guidance. I think we, we should be good, by, good for that. I mean, you can do a bit of back calculation. The margins are okay, looks uh, and within reach. Yeah, because if I do that calculation, then we are, uh, I mean, either. So if you, are, if you factor the additional cost which will come with the new plans, uh -huh. come down the middle, yeah. That is a function of post inspection once you commercialize in the second half. Uh -huh. Absolutely. Otherwise, otherwise, it's still in this much. Perfect, great. Thank you so much and all the best. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Yash Gupta from Angel Broking. Please go ahead. Uh, good evening, sir. Thank you for the opportunity. My first question is on API as the Chinese player, Chinese competition are back in the business. So how uh, this pricing will be volatile in the next couple of months? So uh, as I've said historically in the past that we uh, don't really compete as much with the Chinese because we supply only to the regulated markets. Uh, and increasingly, even pre-COVID, there was a lot of, uh, we saw a lot of action of people having alternate sources from China in terms of the intermediates and the regulatory approvals and inspections. So having said that, yes, Chinese are back in the market. Uh, I think demand will slow a little bit compared to what it was, but I don't expect 
pricing to be hit as such. Okay. Uh, second question is on the Sartan business. Uh, can you give some sales number for the Sartan Q2 FY21? Yeah, no, sorry. As, uh, you know, we don't give product-wise uh, breakup of our uh, sales. Uh, okay. So, just want to understand whether the dip of uh, or degrowth of 1% in the US business is just because of the Sartan or is, uh, is there any other things are also involved in this? Just Sartan. Okay. Okay. Uh, thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Abhishek Sharma from Jeffries. Please go ahead. Uh, thanks for the uh, follow-up. Uh, sir, just from Sartan, uh, wanted some color. Uh, since you sell a basket of Sartan products in the U.S., uh, so is there any specific Sartan which is getting impacted, like only Sartan or Gulf Sartan, um, or is it all across? And secondly, uh, you know, is the pressure more on the price side or the volume side? Thank you. Yeah, so um, I'll explain. Actually, it's very interesting because the last year, or for the last eight quarters, what we've seen is we saw opportunities across the board in various startups, uh, which were short term, some were short term, some were long term, some were one time buys. So, all that together cause, uh, is what led to a lot of growth. What we're seeing right now is there was one certain particular where we uh, let go of the business uh, on pricing front. Uh, we didn't want to be in that. And that has caused some of the sales risk. I think by and large, most of the startups are stable of single digit price decline kind of a thing. Or less than a single digit price decline, yeah. And the volumes are intact on all other startups. Just that the yeah. pricing is. Uh, yeah, absolutely. And if you would like to point out which Sartan is it that where you decline business and I you know I, I don't want to say it, but if you see market shares you will see which one it is. Sure. Okay. Thanks. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, we'll take the last question from the line of Ranbir Singh from Sunidhi Securities. Please go ahead. Mr. Singh, your line is unmuted. Please go ahead with the question. Hello. Yes, sir. We can hear you. Yeah. Please. Yeah. My question is uh, related to Ryzen Pharma. So in Ryzen Pharma, this quarter we have, uh, you know, income uh, which is reflected there in results. So uh, is this a part of milestone payment we are receiving, or this is a recurring type of uh, uh, profits we are gaining? This is the milestone. And uh, so any like uh, we had a total deal size 150 million. So that that is uh, uh, any visibility on it? Uh, what kind of uh, milestone we can get in uh, either in 21 or 22? So I, I responded uh, um, uh, a bit earlier. Uh, deal size always consists of a uh, few things. One is the milestone on various, uh, uh, reaching various, uh, obviously, miles, milestones. The second is your royalty which you get on the sales. And the third is the manufacturing uh, rights. So rise and deal uh, consists of these three things. Uh, going forward, milestone will be only on the product launch. And then subsequently, okay. the royalty and the manufacturing uh, uh, rights will kick in. Okay. Okay. Right. Okay, sir. Thank you and all the best. Yeah. Thank, you. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, that was the last question. I now hand the conference over to Mr. R.K. Brahiti for closing comments. Uh, thanks. Uh, thanks, everyone, for attending the call. As always, it's very uh, interesting and a pleasure talking to all of you. Uh, esteemed uh, learned um, and uh, we'll keep interacting. If any of you have any questions, uh, please drop a mail to Ajay or Nitanshu. We'll be happy to respond to you. And uh, look forward to see you again uh, next quarter, hopefully in better situation. Thank you all. Good evening. Have a safe day. Safe uh, rest of the year. Thank you very much, sir.